got more clips of a CNN panel speaking on the recent bombshells that are dropping about Trump, things he said, who he is, what he did in office. So I've lined them up for us to look at and I thought we could provide additional context to each and every one. Trump said that he believed that the enemy was within. He named names, United States uh, Congress people, Democrats, who he wanted to put the military on them. How does that land for you? And does it explain why John Kelly would then decide to put all of his hesitancy aside and come forward right now? Yes, because General John Kelly is a patriot. I don't think anybody at this table would argue with that. He's a man who served his country honorably under tremendous circumstances. He lost his son on the altar of freedom uh, to a landmine in Afghanistan. This is a man who cares very deeply about his country. And, and many of us have been waiting to hear from him because we've heard all these quotes and anonymous sources and you wanted to hear the man's voice. Uh, and that's what you heard now. And it's a chorus now. Right? It's General Mark Milley, who was his chairman of the Joint Chiefs. It's his former vice president. It's the former Secretary of Defense, Dick Cheney. It's his former Secretary of Defense, Mark Esper. It's basically the entire military uh, and defense community that served under him that is now opposing him. And it's because it's ultimately, in my view, about the commander in chief test. And that's what's going to move, especially independent voters, in this next couple of weeks. And for the longest time, the MAGA talking point about this was well, we can't believe the whispers until we hear something from him himself. And now the man himself is confirming, yes. Trump did praise Hitler and his generals behind the scenes. He did threaten his political opposition. He did disparage troops multiple times, but now it's MAGA just scrambling to still defend him because they have no true red line for him. The red line they pretend to draw once Trump crosses them because he'll cross any of them. He, they just say, oh, well, nope, doesn't count, right? It's just, we're voting for Trump no matter what he does. So now it's a lifelong Republican like Kelly is a rhino or he's woke or whatever it is. But for those of us in the middle, those of us on the left, you know, not in the cult, it's easy to see that if everyone who's worked in close capacity with Trump while he was president only has negative things to say from his top generals to his vice president, it speaks to someone you wouldn't want to trust to hold the highest power in office in this country, those of whom who agree with him on policy in, in many instances, right? They agree more with him on policy, both domestic and foreign, but say that we can't vote for this guy because of the danger that he represents. That's something that shouldn't be taken lightly. He basically said to you that those who died for America on the battlefield were losers and suckers, and he said it more than once. Yes, uh, but he would not but he would say it would always did something else would get him going off at times again McCain but he never could wrap his arms around why people would serve uh, the country in uniform what was in it for them that was the general theme what was in it for them it's his voice I mean he, he wants there to be no doubt that, that he believes that he saw this happen, he heard this happen. You know, there's been a lot of speculation saying maybe he didn't say that, maybe he doesn't really believe it. Now he's going on the record, you're hearing his voice, he wants everybody in the world to hear his voice. The only person you haven't heard from is General Mattis. He's kind of the last holdout that people want to hear from. Maybe we'll hear from him and others in these final days, but that would be just about the only voice that served under him that hasn't spoken out in opposition of him in the last couple of months or years. The simple fact of the matter is if you're not trying to do mental gymnastics to defend Trump, the truth is pretty easy to see. I mean, he called John McCain a loser for being a prisoner of war on TV publicly for anyone and everyone to see. But then MAGA wants to say it's so far-fetched and there's no possible way that he called other troop suckers and losers? Are we being so for real as if like he would only do it publicly? There's no way he did it in private. I mean, I'm trusting the five-star general over the chronic liar myself. I think that the two moralities of the men can be weighed and you can value who you think is better. I mean, this, this is someone who's not trying to make public appearances, become a speaker, become like a content creator, get publicity. It's someone who's speaking out now because they feel like it's in the best interest of the country. And again, five-star general, doesn't need Trump, doesn't need to be bitter, but whatever. And in Kelly's instance, again, also very prestigious tr soldier, right? Served our country, wasn't fired. He's stepping out to say, yes, he constantly disparaged these troops behind closed doors to my face. This is something that will move veterans, right? Those who are a crucial constituency for Republicans. Meanwhile, MAGA, who are supposed to be the ones who respect our troops, will do anything to disparage them to defend Trump for his comments. If you heard that about somebody and you personally didn't, it's like, you know, you didn't personally witness the person that you've known for your whole life doing something really wrong, but someone else did. Someone vic was victimized by it. Do you discount that? 
as a he said, she said? No, I, I, look, I think is is you know, as Bakari said, it's totality of circumstance. Everybody has to weigh and make their decision. That's the great thing about a democracy, right? You hear all these things, and everybody's going to go in on, on November 5th, and they're going to make a decision. And, and what I think, you know, jo Joe Biden once said, you know, he's, this was his line, you know, don't compare me against the almighty, compare me against the alternative. And I think that's what's happening yeah. in this That's case. all we want. I, that's all that's we want. All we and, want. Think, and listen, and no, I think, and I think, no, and, and I, I think, think if I'm comparing and, and anyone I, I, I to ever say yeah. that Hitler did something good, then the alternative is better. And, 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 and I think and, that's what we're, uh, I think, and I guess I, I, I just keep asking the question, what is ever going to be disqualifying for Donald Trump? Nothing. There's absolutely nothing that's disqualifying for MAGA. They will carry insane amounts of water for anything Trump says or does because they've made supporting him part of their personality. A lot of them don't even have political, uh, they don't care about politics outside of Trump. Some enjoy that he gives them a space to be conspiracy theorists and paranoid about the government. Some enjoy the space for bigotry, racism, hatred, all of these things. But if after saying that Hitler did some good things, praising Hitler's generals, calling a prisoner of war a loser, calling fallen soldiers suckers and losers, telling a neo-Nazi group to stand back and stand by, praising world dictators at any chance he can, sexual assault, fraud, falsifying business records to hide an affair, election interference, refusing to concede, speaking racist lies about immigrants, admitting he has no health care plan. If after all of this and more, you can't say, okay, maybe he doesn't have the morality to lead our country. Maybe anything would be a better alternative to this. Then there's just not going to be anything that does it for you personally. <laughs>